Auto Line on the Road from CES in Las Vegas is brought to you by our signature sponsor, Magna, and also by Bose and Gentex. So the crazy thing is this car is built for passengers and for drivers. I don't know if I mentioned this. This has 1,050 horsepower. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yes, yes. I remember can, that from before. Can go 0 to 60 miles in 2.2 seconds because it's all-wheel drive uh, concept. You don't really need it, but um, it's a modular system. So it's three electric engines, mm -hmm. all exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And you can put in one or two or three, which basically gives you a platform where you can scale your power from 300 to all the way up to 1,050. 1,050. 1,000 wasn't <laughs> enough. You had to go over that. <laughs> all right, it's interesting because the, uh, we, we talked about potential investment opportunities in, 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 in the future and the whole capital markets are getting more and more difficult, we have to say, hmm. with this Why in, is in that? this industry. Because yeah, they understood that this is a business where you have to invest a lot of money and uh, the return will come back later and there's a lot of risk with it as well. But the good thing here in our case is we have this technology and powertrain technology, for example, is really is ready to use. So some of the potential investors we are talking right now car companies and big technology companies, they, they start projects with us right now using our technology. Mm -hmm. This gives us a chance to, to validate the technology mm. and show our, show our capability of execution. Have any OEMs come knocking? Looking yes, to we, are, we, are, we are in concrete discussions with one big, big company. And um, so if you're just a PowerPoint startup having a show car and a lot of great ideas, it is, it's very, very difficult right now to, to raise money and move uh -huh. forward. Karsten, how do you do it? I mean, I got to think with the career that you've had and with un uh, startups, so much uncertainty. <laughs> you must have a cast iron stomach and just <laughs> welcome stress. You know what? Um, when I left BMW four years before, I had a very safe job. Mm -hmm. Top level executive, and uh, I, I'm sure you know those guys. You get, you have good salary, you get mm -hmm. a pension. You have to retire, by the way, with 60 years. You get a fan pension. You get company cars until the end of your life, whatever you want. But it's boring to some degree, <laughs> I have to say. Eh? So I, I was asked if I would be interested to build a new company with Chinese money and this great vision, which I always share. I did not know in this point of time what really what was going to happen and how my li life would change and how difficult or different it is to be an entrepreneur than being a top level executive. But if you ask me today, would I do it again? I would clearly say yes, because um, there's something great coming with it. And this is, um, you see what you do and you're responsible and you create something. And mm -hmm. if you don't do it, then it will not happen. But mm -hmm. if you do it, it happens. So, mm -hmm. You, you really can execute and, and, and create something which is very difficult, uh, even as a, as a top level executive in a, in a big op uh, operation, corporation. And you get used to this uh, uncertainty. It's become your daily job to make sure that things are, are working. And I don't want to miss it. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a great quote recently that said, uh, challenges are what makes life interesting. Yes. Overcoming them is what makes life meaningful. <laughs> this is a very good quote. Yeah. yeah. I would say if I compare it to my life before, my life is much more difficult now. Before I, I stopped it Friday afternoon, went to Gala Lake in Italy um, to my boat and came back on Monday and all was good. Mm -hmm. uh, right now I have to work much more, have much more stress, much more uncertainty. But I really, and I mean it, I feel 10 years younger now. And oh, this, I wow. think it's a good That's sign. Great. That's great. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, just saying that you would do it again tells De me definitely, everything. Definitely, definitely. And uh, what I really enjoy is this kind of global approach because if you deal with electric connected cars, you will be linked to China, you will be linked to California, yeah. not so much to Europe, um, just a bit maybe because of suppliers. Well, you're reinventing the car business, really. Correct. At least we try to be a significant, um, give a significant contribution to it. And, and this kind of being, con um, experiencing different economies, different cultures, different people, China, California, and a bit Europe, this is a great experience as well, mm -hmm. because you, you feel, uh, I feel to some degree, 
might sound a bit strange, but I feel to some degree like a citizen of the world now and not and not, not any longer as just a citizen of a country. Yeah, yeah. no, 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 I, I, absolutely. And that, that gives you better perspective. Correct. Considering yourself a citizen of the world. Exactly. And it's quite exciting. Well, you know, that's what I've said all along. Uh, BEVs are interesting. And they change the car, but they don't change it dramatically. They change how you propel the car. It opens up some uh, real estate on the yes. interior and the like. But autonomy and shared mobility, that changes exactly. everything. Exactly. This is how the game changes. And the, those changes, this results in different business models. Those different business models drive different products. And this is where you have a chance as a new company. Because, again, BMW or all the others, they will be able to build electric cars. But they will not be able, and this I really know what I'm talking about, to change the business model completely. Because an organization of 100,000 like BMW or 400, 500,000 Volkswagen, they will never ever be able to change the business model completely. Right. Uh, in, in my 20 years at this company, I went through many so-called change programs where people wanted to change very little compared to what the, to the change which is going on right now. And you really know, you really see how difficult it is to change in a big organization with installed processes, which is designed for stability. Mm -hmm. Because those companies are built for stability. You mm -hmm. can basically change all the people if you want, it will still work. Right. Uh, this is stability if you operate around a, a certain operating point, let's say. But if you want to change the world, then it just does not work. No, you can't. That's exactly <laughs> right. That's what startups are for. Exactly. And Really, you're living at a brilliant time because 10 years ago, this would not have been possible. Exactly. 20 years ago, for absolutely, for sure, not possible. 10 years ago, maybe there were some visionaries that were starting to think of it. Exactly. Yeah. This is an incredible period in time, uh, you know, especially it's for the automotive industry. Absolutely, the tipping point right now. Sometimes I, I, I say to myself, um, I should have started earlier to become an entrepreneur and do my own thing, but my, my heart is with this kind of industry. And as you said, the tipping point is now, 10 years before. It, 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 would, it could not have happened. could not have happened. And so you, you, it's really impressive to see how fast things can change. You just Tesla, for example. Mm -hmm. I have to say Tesla did from, 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 from an execution standpoint, um, if you compare it with the excellence of automotive industry, did everything wrong at the beginning. Yeah, yeah? right. Um, but, uh, and, and I still remember four years back, um, great people from automotive industry told me, don't, don't worry about Tesla, they will never be successful because A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. Today, last year, they built 360,000 cars, right. something like this. Right. Yeah? Uh, created a premium brand in, in, in only 14, 15 years and selling more than more uh, cars than BMW 5 and 7 series uh, together. Right, <laughs> right. And um, so there is a chance to move things forward. No, it's extraordinary. You know, I, uh, I still think the company is financially shaky, <laughs> yes. but from an electronic, especially engineering standpoint, what they've done is brilliant. Absolutely. You know, their introduction of over-the-air updates, just as one example, yeah. you know, their, their centralized computing architecture, mm -hmm. the, the fact that they're now designing and making their own AI chips I mean, what car company would ever this do that? Similar. But this is, you, you need this understanding of consumer electronics and internet business to do so. If right. not, you will not be able to do it. And, right. and you cannot change this mindset. From If you, if you have a company with 100,000 people trained to develop, build and sell cars like they are today, you will not make it. Right. You will not convert it into a consumer electronics internet. That's right. There is no way. Yeah. yeah, somebody explained this to me years and years ago. Mm -hmm. He said, and I, I don't know if it's the exact right number, he says, tomorrow morning, General Motors has to get up and build 30,000 vehicles, yes. or whatever the number yeah, is. Yeah. He says, they have no choice. That's they the have to go out and build 30,000 cars tomorrow. Exactly. And no one, this is a, the, the, there is no room for, for um, action, let's say. And the management structures and leadership structures of those companies doesn't allow it, by the way. Yeah? If you, mm -hmm. I don't know so much how this really works in the US, but in, in Europe, it's very easy. If you are a board member, you get a contract for three or five years. Mm -hmm. And then um, 
all your compensation, maybe 20% is fixed and the rest is linked to KPIs. And those KPIs are basically the profit of the mm -hmm. companies and things like this. So now you have two choices. You can, um, you, you go in, you do your job for three or five years and you use the technology, the product, the business model, optimize cost a bit, push the volume, a bit goes up from whatever, from 8.5 to 8.9 and the next most successful year in the history of the company. And you do this for five years well, as a great guy and then things will, will go on like that. Yeah. The, the alternative is you go in and say, oh, we have to change um, technology, so get rid of all the billions we invested before and invest billions in other things. Um, we change the business model um, and um, our products and everything to be prepared what, what's going to happen in 10 years. Then your habit will go down um, and uh, you will not get your salary. Uh, and you might even get fired after two or yeah. three years because yeah. you don't meet your KPIs. So if you, if, if you make it, if you would make it over 10 years, and people might say, this guy is, uh, saved the company, mm -hmm. but you will never get to this point. All right. All right. It's as easy, as simple like this. Well, the other thing I see going on is, I, I believe we're at peak auto, mm -hmm. certainly in the United States and Europe. Mm -hmm. Sales will never go above where they are right oh. now. But vehicle miles traveled, is Definitely. going to grow tremendously. Ex exactly. And that's exactly, exactly. what your business yeah. plan's yeah. focused yeah, yeah, yeah. on. Go after the VMT, not just retailing more units. Vehicles sold will go down, basically. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. miles traveled will, 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 will go up. Too. Right. No, oh, you're absolutely right. And this is where you have to build your business on. Huh? So where do you live? In Los Angeles. In, uh, and South, in South. China, too? Um, not any longer. I had residences in Germany, China, and uh, in, in NUS in Palo Alto during the Biden time because I was traveling all the time. Mm -hmm. Because we had, R &D, we had the design center and basic engineering in Germany, uh, production supply chain in China, and, and a technical R&D for advanced technology, let's say, in, in Palo Alto. But further has everything here. Uh, and just try. We have, we have an, an engineering team in Shanghai and in Beijing as well, but most of the operations is here. So I really moved to Los Angeles now. This is my new home, and I enjoy to stay at one place and do sometimes business travel, which is really great for me now. Right. <laughs> compared to before, and I love Los Angeles. It's a nice, very very nice place to live. There's a lot there. Yes, I'm There's living close to the sea, and I really like the sea. Mm -hmm. So it's quite good. So CES is productive for you? Yes, uh, we, 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 uh, we don't have a booth this year here and I don't want it to be honest because uh, this costs a lot of money right. and then you just display a lot of ideas and uh, the company is not in a position to do this right now mm -hmm. and I don't think it makes sense. But we, we try to show substance here. So mm -hmm. I, I personally drove the car yesterday from LA here. I'm going to report about this experience uh, and I will tell the people we don't need to spend money for booths. We have the real product here, and whoever's interested can experience the right. product. Yeah, we right. want to send this message around. Right. You'll get a, a true ROI over the way that you're doing it right now. Yes. yes. There were too many promises made in the past, and too few of them really became true. So it's better to talk about what you achieved and not what you plan to do. Absolutely right. So I'm sure when you started your career at BMW, you never <laughs> thought anything <laughs> like this would happen. No, never, never, ever. So why'd you leave BMW and, and why'd the whole team quit all at once? Um, yeah, basically two things came together. One is uh, I, I, I did a lot of different jobs in the company. Do nearly everything you can do in a car company. And my, my last job was was uh, heading the BMW i8 program. So mm -hmm. I was part of the BMW i organization, which is a kind of was the idea of creating kind of a startup in startup in a big corporation. Mm -hmm. Was separate from the rest and separate building, mm -hmm. separate uh, area and so on. So we did i3 and i8. And this was really fun from technology and product uh, standpoint, but it was more understanding what's going on in the future in mobility. And this is where I came in contact with the future, I would say. So then uh, when i3 and i8 went out, um, BMW was not completely happy uh, because um, the profitability of those cars right at the beginning... Never happened. Never, it was profitable, but it never um, met the 
the, the, the tough targets, let's say, of, of a product which is there for 100 years already. Um, so they stepped back a bit, um, and then I had to think what I had to think about what what to do, and I. It was difficult for me to decide, I have to say, to go back into, in, into the big corporate organization and mm -hmm. do something meaningful there. And at the same time, I was approached by three Chinese, uh, big Chinese guys from Ta Terry Gu from, from Foxconn, chairman of Foxconn, mm -hmm. uh, Pony Ma, the chairman of Tencent, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Chang Ye Fong, the chairman of Harmony Auto Group, which is the biggest premium car dealer in, in, uh, in China. And they uh, asked uh, if I would be interested to, to build a company for the first smart electric internet car out of China, premium and affordable, and for the world. So something like that. was really a big question. Uh, and then I said, this might be a one-off chance uh, uh, in the life to do something like this. I had another 10 years to go in BMW until uh, I would have to retire. And I said, um, now or never. Now or never. You'll kick yourself the rest of your <laughs> life if you don't yeah, do yeah, it. Exactly. And so I said, I said to myself, no. And then I started. And it was, it was a good decision. I learned so much in the last four years. And oh, again, yeah. I, said, I, I mean, I feel this is like a PhD <laughs> in, in entrepreneurialism. Yes. Yeah. How'd they come to you? It's uh, those, those three guys, they, they set up a, a, a fund, an industry fund, they, they wanted to step in into this industry and then they found a headhunter to contact me. <laughs> and this was funny, a funny story behind it. The guy asked me if I would be prepared to talk to one of those three big guys and I told him yes. But it was in August, beginning of August. Uh, and I told him the last, the next two weeks I'm at Gado Lake on my boat with my family. This is family vacation and not going to touch it so we can take later, can talk later. <laughs> and that he asked me that, uh, does your marina have a restaurant in, in Italy? Uh, is there a res restaurant? And I told him, yes, there is a nice one. And then one of the guys came over, he flew over, brought uh, uh, stuff of three or four people, a lot of big charts, <laughs> and with it, I came to visit me in my marina, where, where my boat is in, 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 in Italy, <laughs> and tried to convince me. And this impressed me. Yeah? Because this, this are really they very big guys. You. They came yeah, to me. Right. This never happened to me before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at this level, I have to say. Um, but it shows something about uh, Chinese entrepreneurship. If they want to get something done, they do really they everything to they, make it. Happen. They move fast. <laughs> they move and they move fast. <laughs> yeah, I love the acceleration there. By the way. Yeah, this was this was still not. You, would you try to do the full acceleration for a second or? So can the traditional automakers be competitive? Or how long is it going to take them to catch up? Just talking about best. To be honest, and this is my personal view, if I might be wrong, I don't think that they ever will be able to catch up. Yeah. Yeah. And they will find, they will have to find different business models. Or they become the mass manufacturer of, of, of hardware, right. of right. cars. Yeah. They become suppliers. Suppliers. Or maybe like you know, uh, everyone has op Apple Watch and Sue so onto and so, uh, watches that I, I have as well. But I still like those ones, these ones yeah. as well. Yeah, the and analog this, watch. This, this is very small the market, but uh, as you know, luxury. And uh, the same like horses. Uh, horses to uh, 150 years ago, horse was all about transportation. Today it's still available, but has a very different yeah. <laughs> meaning. And this, for the cars, it might be the same. Some of the top, the premium manufacturers might go back to the niche. Because there still will be. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> there still will be six-cylinder, maybe even eight-cylinder cars in, in 20 years from now. Mm -hmm. Very few, maybe very expensive, um, just for leisure. Uh, so if you want, you can you can cover this area as well. You reduce your volume, focus on, on on premium, and on very cool product. This might be another niche where some of those automakers. Yeah, might yeah, yeah, yeah. But I I, I agree with you. The niche is the only way that they, they will probably survive. So did you feel the acceleration? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so how integrated is your manufacturing? Are you, are you doing your own stamping and stuff like that? or? Uh, no, for the first 30,000 units production here, we don't do stamping. Stamping 
we buy the stamp parts. Mm -hmm. We do welding, the body shop, uh, paint with a paint shop mm -hmm. and assembly. Um, but uh, the, the the stamping does not make sense for this yeah. volume. And again, I'm, I'm a fan to make use of investments which has been already done and do the minimum possible to really get your product to the market and prove it. Mm -hmm. Once you scale, yeah, you have your market position, you scale, then you can then start you can to optimize. Right. Yeah. And obviously doing it by yourself might uh, optimize your business um, a bit, but it's way too much and too complex and too much risk to do this right away from the beginning. Yeah, does yeah, not make sense yeah, at all. Right. Concentrate on the product, get it to the customer, mm -hmm. get market share. Which is the startup way, right? Yes. Move fast. Move fast. That's Larry it. Burns, who used to be the head of R&D at GM, has a great saying now. Um, start small, think big, move fast. Yes, <laughs> but it's, it's exactly but, it. But, but start small, and that's <laughs> yes. what most of that, they want, the, the Taj Mahal. Everything, yeah. Right. And this is the, was the problem of this company at the beginning as well, I have to say, because the plan and the vision is great, but they try to do everything at the same time, and this is wrong. Yeah. We have to start small. Yeah. Karsten, thanks, Good. man. This has Thank been terrific. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed the ride. Very much. Tomorrow's vehicles will communicate with your house, make payments, even recognize you with the latest in digital vision, car-to-home automation, and vehicle-to-infrastructure technology. So consider Gentex for scalable features ready today based on tomorrow's emerging technology.